Hello and welcome to the 18th episode of the Rocket League map making tutorial series. Today we're going to be talking about the map expansion plugin. Now, the map expansion plugin is a plugin that lets you do this stuff. It basically lets you run Bakis mod and use Bakis mod for uh, in maps without having to code anything. We well, have to know Kismet a little bit, but it's pretty simple stuff. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is just going through how to do this. So if you want to figure it out yourself, you can. Uh, this is all I'm going to be doing is going through this page though, so you don't have to listen to me jabber if you don't want to. Uh, but I know the first time I used this I was a little confused, so that's why I'm making a tutorial on it. So first thing we're going to do is there are two two types of commands you can run. There are Bakis mod commands and then there are custom commands. And you do this with strains. So I'm going to grab a strain variable. And so there are two types. There's BM command. It's too many M's. BM command and map expansion plugin command. And map expansion plugin command basically lets you run custom commands, and this lets you run Bogies mod commands. And I've recorded this thing five times now. <laughs> And I figured out that these two need to be in the main sequence in order for any of this to work. So I'm, go I'm going to create a subsequence called map expansion plugin. I hope I spelled that right. So map expansion plugin. And we're going to be using these two variables a lot, but these two variables have to be in the main sequence. So I'm just going to name this map expansion plugin variables and then we'll go into here okay so let's say we run around a basic Bakis mod command so new action set variable string and I've done this before so I actually have triggers already set up so we're going to use the right trigger right trigger and then declare only client side zero Zero. And another important thing to mention about this is that these commands will only work on the host side. So if you're doing something with the ball, it'll work. But if you're trying to manipulate cars, I'm pretty sure it'll only work for the host. I've only tested this plugin in a training map, the Olympics. And so I don't know if they work multiplayer, but they only I know the commands only work for the host. So keep that in mind while you're using this. All right. So we have our variable. We have bm command, and then we have map command, and to make that variable, I'm just hitting n and left click, and then it'll create a name variable. And so this is where things are going to get a little weird. <laughs> so we're going to copy the string, and then we're going to put this bm command, we're going to put it as the target and the value just like that. And then in this first value is where we're going to put the command. So in order to find the commands, you can go into the Bakis mod fandom page and you can find all of their commands. Uh, we're going to be just launching the ball up because it's easy. So I'm going to do ball velocity 0, 0, 2000. So ball velocity 0, 0. Let's do 1000 actually. <laughs> okay. And so that, you leave this target empty. And what that's going to do is it's going to launch the ball up. Now, there's another thing you can do, which comes in very handy, which is logging to the Bakis mod console. So let's say once I launch this ball up, I want to log it to the console. I'm going to go back in the sequence actually to add one more variable. Put it in the middle here. Called BM log. And this is going to let us log straight to the console again only for the host i think uh, i haven't really tested multiplayer so i'm not entirely sure but it's always for the host just assume it's always for the host so after this i want to log that the ball is launched up so log and then ball launched up so it's going to tell us in the box mod console that the ball launched up before we get into the custom plugins you can do a custom event name. So new event, remote event. We'll get into this a little bit later, but you can call it MEP lo loaded. 
And this is going to tell you when the plugin loads. So I'll just add a draw text here for now. But we are going to come back to this. Four, five, five, just make it huge. Loaded. Okay. Next we get into the custom commands. Now, there are a few commands you could do. I'm gonna write them all out just a second. Okay, so these five commands are all of the things you can do with MVP command. Now, these aren't the full commands for most of them. Input stop, it stops just, you know, the car from receiving any inputs. There's also a node for this called control car movement. So you can do it this way too. Uh, and then begin and stop, enable, disable. It's the same type of thing. I'm not gonna be using those. There's something called key listen. So let's say I want it to listen for U, I, O, and P. Uh, if you want to find the keybinds that uh, UDK supports, you're going to have to go into here, mappable keys, and you can find them here. And this website will obviously be in the description and the Google Drive. Uh, but you can just find anything. U, I, O, P is what I want to do, though. And then key pressed as the remote event. And there can't be any space, there's a comma in between all the letters and no spaces. And then we're going to create a remote event called key pressed. Just, just copy that so I know I'm typing it right. Okay. And then let's do this on after I hit the other trigger. So if I hit the other trigger. At any time, I want to. I'm just going to copy this. And I'm going to name this. Instead of from BM command, I'm going to name it MVP command. And then we're going to put our key list in here. Just like that. And so it's going to activate this remote event whenever we hit UI, O, or P after hitting that trigger. And this brings us to save data and load data. So after the key is pressed, I am going to save the velocity and the, I guess the, the direction of the velocity, just for example. I need to set the ball as a variable. So let me do that really quickly. So we're gonna do that. I don't know if I've explained this, but I'll just go over it just in case. Let's just do a countdown start, TA game, add game ball, add it there, all players, client side and then the spawned ball is called ball and then when we destroy the ball we need to destroy the ball and then add it 0.5 seconds later and then we also need to add the path node if I can select it there we go Okay, so that's going to destroy the ball and then add a new one at that path node. And then this is going to be ball. And then the velocity magnitude, uh, I'm going to call ball vel. The, everything you want to save needs to have a variable name. So if it doesn't have a variable name, you, you can't save it. And you'll see one in just a second. So we're going to get the velocity and then we're going to save data. So I'm just going to copy this again because I'm lazy. So I want to save, save data and then you space ball velocity and ball loca. Uh, again, commas, no spaces. And then I'm going to put a space and type the remote event name or not the remote event name, uh, the file name. So the file name is going to be where it saves the data. Uh, I'm just going to name it tutorial data. Um, and I will show you what this looks like for the Olympics really quick so you can see what it's doing. So if you ever want to clear data, you can f go if you open the box mod folder, you can do that by going into your box mod and then file open box mod folder. You can go into data and expansion. And then right here is where it's going to save your data. So if I open Eglympics with the notepad, you can see it tracks the kismet variable, the type it is, and then the value of it. 
So I have a lot for Eglimpics. I save all the times as strings and floats, but you can see here that this is how it saves it. So you have to make sure you give it the variable name and make sure it's case sensitive. And so if you ever want to delete or change, you can technically change data in the map by doing this. Uh, so you're going to have to add, I don't know, some sort of lock if you could do that so people don't go in editing. For Olympics, we didn't. We just needed video proof, so it worked out for us. If you ever want to run a, a a tournament like that or a challenge, just make sure you have video proof of it actually happening in real time rather than just a score because that yeah, they, they t you can go and change this data just with a notepad. Okay, and then next... We're going, we save the data and we're going to do that after the key is pressed. Next, I want to load this data when this, you know, actually I'm going to log this just so we can see it. I'm going to convert ball velocity and ball loca, both the string include variable comment. And then I'm going to log that. Okay. So after we set this, I'm going to copy this and paste it here at the top where our plugin loads and we're going to load this data when the plugin loads. So we're going to, instead of save data, we're going to get rid of our variable names and we're going to change the save data to load data. So to load data, you just put load data and then the name of the data. And then that's it. So when the plugin loads, it's going to load that data. And then I also want to log them after the plugin loads just so we can see that's working so i'm going to put a 0 0.5 second delay just so i can set them and then we're going to take this and move it up here so what this is going to do or what this should do is when we hit the right trigger it's going to launch the ball up and it's going to tell us the ball launched up in the log. And then when we touch the left trigger, I'll name it left. The key listen is pressed. Whenever we press U, I, O, or P, it's going to activate this remote event. And we're going to get the velocity of the ball and the velocity vector just so we can log more than one variable. And then we're going to save that data, convert it to a string, and log it. And then we are going to load that data, convert it to string, and log it. Uh, you can't, you can't just do a straight log of a variable because you need to set the string, and the string won't link to this. So you need to convert it to a string first. And that is all the commands. Well, all of the things you'll use for the map expansion plugin. You load the data, you save the data, key listen, the input stop and begin. I'm gonna delete that. Logging, bonky smart commands. And that's everything. So we'll go and game and show you what it looks like. All right, so I want to show you us loading in because it's not actually going to load the map immediately. You can see that the plugin hasn't loaded yet. So when we join a team, it's going to load. So it's going to do it whenever a player spawns. And then there's our ball that destroys and adds. Now, if we go over here to this cube over here and we hit this button, it should launch the ball up. And then we should see a log so you can see, map lab, labs utopia P says launch, ball launched up. And then you can also see labs utopia P says 0000. zero, zero, zero. And you can see what, it, what it's doing. Alright, so there it goes. Ball launched up again. So once we hit this, making bind with keys UIOP or mode event key pressed. So if I press I there we go so activating a remote event key pressed it says velocity vector save data so now oh variables have to be in the main sequence okay well that's good to know um, but it still worked so I'm going to exit and we're going to reload the, and so it should load the data when we launch the map now so let's do this. 
It says the data has been loaded, but it says 000, and that's probably because our variables weren't in the main sequence. So that's my bad. Okay, so your variables here, ball velocity, ball loca, they would need to be on the main sequence. So if I were to add them here, uh, float, so ball velocity, and then a location vector, or just a vector, I guess, for DDK, ball loca. And then right here, we can change this to ball vel and ball loca. I gotta go back and change this one. Gotta love. Okay, okay. And then I'll just link that here. Here. I'm not going to go back and game and test this. I'm just showing you this because this is how it's going to be in the map. But. If I were to do this in game, it would work now uh, because our variables are now in the sequence. So vector, vector, and vector, just like that. I, I, we're just resetting it up with this location or with this name variable. And there you go. So now it's going to load everything and say everything correctly. Remote events can be on subsequences, variables cannot. But you can see the ball launched up like it was supposed to, and then it logged that the ball launched up. And then after the key listen, after I activated it, it said there was a key listen. There's another way you can do this. Instead of key listen, you can use, since it's just for host, there is a node called, uh, I'm gonna have to find it. Light bulb, help me. Not action key slash button pressed so this is doing pretty much the same exact thing um so you can add your variables here so u i o and p and this is going to do the same exact thing uh make sure to uncheck trap input um trap input uh, i don't i don't want to go too in depth but basically if you were driving so if i made this w it would activate this remote event instead of letting you drive. So it's basically going to eat the input in this node. So you don't want to do that. Even though it's UIOP and they don't do anything, I don't, I don't think. You just don't want to eat the input. But this is another way you could do this without using the plugin. Uh, but that's going to do it for this tutorial. Uh, the map expansion plugin. It's a little bit of a hard one, but once you figure it out, like once you figure out that you need to set the value, and this is what tripped me out the first time is I was just doing this part right here, but you need to set the value of something. And if you need to set multiple commands, you need to do it as a name variable like this, which is what really messed me up the first time. Uh, well, that's going to be it for me. So I will see you in the next one.